Okay, <clears throat> welcome back everyone. We are live again. This is Grockett's OG TV. This is the GMAT edition, like it says down in the lower corner of the screen here. We're doing the 12th edition of the Guide to the Test, as published by the makers of the test. My name is Jim Jacobson. That's my name up there. This is my picture, even though it's kind of small, probably on your screen. And I will be your tutor for the day. Um, with last time we left off on question number 163 on page 164. That was the last one we did. So the next one is page, oh sorry, 163 on page 175. So for those of you following along, it does actually help to have the correct page number. Um, <clears throat> so we're starting with question number 164, the last one on page 175. So 175. Question number 164, this time I mean it, those are the real numbers. We have in our answer choices negative 9, negative 3, negative 1 ninth, 1 ninth, and 9. So if m to the negative 1 equals negative 1 third, then m to the negative 2 is equal to what? So m to the negative 1 equals negative 1 third. So there's kind of two approaches, depending on how comfortable you are with exponents on this one. One thing to realize is that, you know, uh, m to the negative 1 equals 1 over m to the 1. So m to the negative 1, then, it, you know, m to the negative 1 is um, negative 1 third. That's the same thing as 1 over m equals negative 1 third. Therefore, m itself equals negative 3 and 1 over uh, m squared, so 1 over negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is, um, of course, 9, so we get 1 ninth, answer choice D. And of course, the other way is going to result in the same correct answer. Um, you can also realize then that, um, since we're trying to figure out what m to the negative 2 power is, m to the negative 2 is the same thing as m to the negative 1 squared. And since, um, you know, when you raise exponents to exponents, you know, x to the a to the b equals x to the ab. So we can just take our value for um, m to the negative 1 and square that and get one ninth. Negative one third times negative one third is one ninth. So either way, and I'd say they're about equally fast in this case, that's not true of every um, every question. In some cases it is in your best interest to kind of reconfigure how you deal with negative exponents. In other ones, leaving them in exponent form is actually going to be the easier way. Um, some practice with the GMAT will help you learn to differentiate the two. Anyway, we can now move on to page 176, and all the good problems that it brings. Question number 165. So we have y minus x over 2, y minus x over 2, y over 2 minus x, 2y minus x, and 2x. So due to the similarities here of y minus x um, and then where the 2 goes in here, it's pretty clear even, I mean, you know, of course, uh, on the real GMAT, you probably will read the uh, uh, the question first before the answers because you won't be writing out the answers separately on your, um, your doodle space. Um, but it is still useful to kind of get an idea of what sort of thing you're after with the answer choices. And so clearly this is going to be much more of a conceptual thing than an arithmetic thing. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's possible we could get a sign wrong or something like that. But in general, it's pretty clearly a question about getting concepts right. Let's take a look. So Lois has x dollars more than Jim has. Different Jim, it's not me. Lois has x dollars more than Jim has, and together they have a total of y dollars. Which of the following represents the number of dollars that Jim has? So uh, we have two variables, and we can actually get two equations out of the uh, out of the question prompt. First one we know is that Lois has, 
and so we can just set that as L equals uh, X dollars more than what Jim has. So we'll call that Jim plus X dollars is what Lois has. We also know that together they have a total of Y dollars. So L plus J equals Y. The question itself is actually asking for the number of dollars that Jim has. So the final answer, when we get down to it, needs to be J equals <clears throat> something. And it needs to not have any L's in it because none of our answer choices have L's in it, which means we're going to use this value of L, call that number one, and substitute that in here. So we get J plus X for a value of L plus a second J equals that y. So that's uh, 2j plus x equals y. And now we have to isolate j on its own. So we subtract x from both sides. 2j equals y minus x. This is starting to look a lot like our answer choices. And then divide both sides by 2. j equals y minus x over 2. And that's the format of our answer choice. And that's Answer choice A. On to the next one. So 176 and 166. Uh, 180, 170, 156, 150, and 105. So during a certain season, a team won 80% of its first 100 games and 50% of its remaining games. If the team won 70% of its games for the entire season, what was the total number of games that team played, or that the team played? So we can just convert this into, you know, the familiar algebraic and numerical expression. So it won 80% of its first 100 games. 80% of 100, by definition, is in fact 80. 80 means, you know, 80 out of 100. Um, I guess we could write it out kind of formally here. That would be 80 over 100. That's our 80% of 100 games. Um, and it won 50% of its next games. 50 out of 100. And we'll call it X, as those are the games beyond 100. Um, and that, those two numbers of games, these are each numbers of games, equaled 70% of their total number of games. And remember, they had 100 games and then X games beyond that. So the total, 70% of the total is 100 plus that number over 100. Okay, so 80% of 100 gives us a flat out 80. We'll leave this guy the way it is for now. Uh, 70% of 100, 7 tenths, well, I guess I could have left this as 5 tenths. Anyway, um, 7 tenths or 70 one hundredths of 100, it's still going to be uh, 70 either way. And actually, I'm going to convert this to tenths. Now it's starting to look more like a real uh, problem. We can subtract 70 from both sides and subtract 5 tenths x from both sides. So subtracting 70 from both sides, we get a 10 over here equals. And then subtracting 5 tenths x from both sides, we get 7 tenths over here, or 2 tenths, excuse me. So, um, you know, we can multiply both sides by 10. 2x equals 100. Uh, therefore, x equals 50. And remember that 50x, you know, in this case, um, x is the number of games beyond 100 that they played. So the total we identified over here is 100 plus x. 100 plus 50 equals 150. Answer choice D.
So 176 and 167. Fourteen, thirteen, nine, seven, and five. So of 30 applicants for a job, 14 had at least four years experience, 18 had degrees, and three had less than four years experience and did not have a degree. How many of the applicants had at least four years experience and had a degree? So when you have two sets of, of kind of binary opposites, or when I do anyway, I find it most useful to set up a chart. So we had uh, those who have at least four years of experience. We have those who have less than four years of experience. We have those who have degrees. And we have those who have no degree. I provide sound effects for the line drawing too because, um, well, where else are you going to get them? I suppose you could turn the sound down and supply your own, but then you wouldn't hear my explanation. Okay, and then the columns are going to be the totals here. Okay, so what do we have? Um, we know that there are 30 applicants for the job. We have 30 down there. Um, we have 14 have at least four years of experience. So 14 total are there. Uh, 18 have degrees. And three had less than four years of experience and did not have a degree. So we have three there. Um, how many of the applicants had at least four years experience and had a degree? So we're actually trying to solve for this box right here. So as you can see, when you get things in a grid format like this, um, if you get uh, two of the things in a row, you can solve for the third one. So one of the things we can do then is if there are 14 total and uh, four, if there are 30 total and 14 um, had uh, more, at least four years of experience, that means that, I should put this in a different color to show what we figured out second. Say, let's do that one. Um, then there are 16 here, because 14 plus 16 equals 30, you know, because we add them across that way. Um, we also then can solve vertically. If there are three that had no degree, there must be 13 that had fewer than four years of experience and um, but did have a degree, uh, which then in turn means that 18 from the total that had degrees, 13 had fewer than four years of experience, which means that we had five in this blank here that we were solving for. That's our choice E, with a happy blue smile, toothy smile, yay. Okay, answer choice E.